Hello, welcome to the Omnivorous Bookworm. My name is Lauren, and today we're going to be talking about the my Jane Austen Readathon TBR. So this one took me quite a while. <laughs> I really agonized over it. I think I over I overthought a little bit, and I have more books on here than I will probably read. But it's good too because I think it it's helpful. It p makes me have less pressure because I can feel like okay, if this book's not working then I can do this other book, and I'm still going to, like, meet all the prompts. So that's my that's my thinking. So we have five um, reading prompts and then two watching prompts. Um, I will link all the videos down below for from Katie's Books and Things and Claudia from Spinster's Library and from Bla Blatantly Bookish, and they're the ones that are, um, like, organizing and... Um, leading the readathon. So I will link all of their announcement videos down below in case you're interested in doing it or just want more information. Um, you can go right to the source. So the first prompt is read one of Jane Austen's main six novels. So I really want to participate in the actual reading because I just I miss that from university. I think it's so much fun when like everybody's reading the same thing and you can discuss things and I love to see what other people like get out of the books because sometimes it's so different than what I get out of it. Um, so I definitely want to do the Mansfield Park and the Persuasion um, readathons because I think I've read Persuasion but it's been so long now that yeah, I basically I haven't. <laughs> And I've never read Mansfield Park, so I'm excited about that. And then, so I'm going to read those two. And if I have time, which I probably won't, but maybe in August. If I don't get to a July, I can do it in August. Um, I'm going to read Northanger Abbey because it's one of those books I've always been meaning to read. And I just haven't gotten around to it. So, like, now's the, now, now or never, right? Well, now. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I feel like I've been putting off Jane Austen for a while because it was one of those authors that I read a lot when I was younger. And I kind of felt like, well, I should read other people because I haven't um, read like so many different classics. But I, what I love about Jane Austen is every time I have read one of her books, I get something new out of it. So like when I was younger... I was just excited, like, that I understood it, <laughs> like, I could get through it, it was, like, basic level, and then as you get older, it's more like you start to get the humor, and some of the nuance, and some of the different cultural things, and that's why I'm excited to read it in a group, because I know, like, a lot of people know a lot more about Reg Regency England than I do, and so I'll be interested to, to learn things as I go. So the second prompt is read something by Jane Austen that is not one of her main six novels. So I'm going to be doing Lady Susan because a lot of other people are doing it and I've never read it and it's short and it looks interesting. I like epistolary novels um, written in letters. I usually enjoy that. So, yeah. Um, number three, read a nonfiction work by Jane Austen or her time. So I have chosen two. I think I'll be able to get through two nonfiction books. Um, neither of these are very academic, so they're pretty simple. I mean, not simple, but not difficult, not dense, I should say. Um, the first one is Courtship and Marriage in Jane Austen's World um, by Maria Grace. And the other one is the Jane Austen Handbook, Proper Life Skills from Regency England by Margaret Sullivan. So... I'm excited to read those because I feel like I have gotten like bits and pieces about you know Regency England and courtship practices like from YouTube videos and documentaries and you know reading different things but it's one of those things that I feel like it's one of those subjects that you think you know about but then there's always interesting things to discover or new things to learn unless that's like you're a scholar and you know lots of things that I don't know. <laughs> All right, so number four is to read a retelling of a Jane Austen book. This is what took me so long and what I really sort of was freaking out about because I knew there was a lot of retellings of Jane Austen's books, but I had no idea how many. 
And, like, I was just getting, like, overwhelmed by all the retellings that there are. So I decided to do it this way. So I had two retellings that um, I found that were free on Kindle Unlimited. Um, the first one is Central Park, the Jane Austen series, a contemporary retelling of Mansfield Park by um, Deborah White Smith. And I think there was another one. Oh, yeah. And then North Point Chalet, the Jane Austen series, a contemporary retelling of Northanger Abbey by Deborah White Smith. So those are both free on Kindle Unlimited. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read one of them. And if I like it, then I'll read the other one. And if I don't like it, then I don't have to. <laughs> and then um, I wanted to read, um, like, you know, because sometimes Kindle Unlimited can be a little bit hit or miss. So I have Aisha at Last by Uzma Jalaluddin. And I know this book was super popular like a couple years ago. And I never got around to it. So I will either read that one or Pride and Prejudice and Other Flavors, a novel, the Raja series, book one by Sonali Dev. So both of those books are a little bit pricey for me. Like, not super, like, they're not super pricey, but I tend to, because I read a lot, try to keep my ebooks under $5. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the sample for both of those and then pick the one that I want to read that seems more interesting for me or seems just whatever I'm in the mood or what I want to do. So, that's how I decided to deal with it. Basically, not. <laughs> All right, number five, read a book by a contemporary of Jane Austen, which is anybody who wrote between 1775 and 1817. This one I was agonizing about, and then I realized that I have a book on my TBR from this time that I haven't gotten around to yet. So I'm going to read The Mysteries of Udolfo by Anne Radcliffe. It was written in 1794. I first came across this book when I was reading The Impossible Girl by Lydia Kong. And one of the characters in the book really liked gothic literature, and she was reading this book. And I looked it up, and I just thought, wow, I, I would be interested in reading that book. And it's a little bit long, so it's been on my TBR for a while. And I've also been reading a lot of Anthony Trollope, so I haven't gotten around to it. So it's a good excuse to read it, and hopefully, hopefully I can do it. Okay. And then for the watching, I was just so basic. Like, I'm completely basic when it comes to watching. Um, watch a direct screen adaptation of a Jane Austen book. I'm going to watch the 1995 BBC Pride and Prejudice because it's been a long time since I've watched it. And I don't know. Okay, I'm basic. When it comes to movies, I'm pretty, I'm not very, <laughs> pretty basic. And then number seven, watch a modern screen adaptation retelling of a Jane Austen book. Again, I have to go with Clueless because I don't, I think it was the summer after sixth grade or seventh grade. I can't remember. I was staying at my grandparents' house and it was like back in the days of, you know, VHS. Oh, I'm really old. Um, I watched this movie like every single day, every single day. I, I probably still have it memorized. <laughs> like I even had the little pin that had the fluffy thing at the top. I just, I thought their clothes were so cool. I just wanted to be Cher. I was never Cher. <laughs> so I'll be really interested to rewatch it because, I mean, it's it's been years since I've watched it. So I'm a little nervous because, like, I do have... I was hearing Claudia say that she's going to watch this and she doesn't have any nostalgia, and I'm the exact opposite. I have all this nostalgia. But that can also work against you because you have, your like how you felt about it as like a 12 year old self watching the movie so then oh sometimes it doesn't hold up because there have been movies and shows that I've watched with my son and I'm like oh this is so good I used to watch this when I was a kid and then I watch it again and I'm thinking oh <laughs> this is not aged well at all has it <laughs> so hopefully that's not the case with Clueless I, I hope not um, so anyway, those are my picks for my, um, Jane Austen TBR. Let me know what you guys are going to be reading down below. Um, if you have any 
uh, advice for which if, if you if I have picked any books that you think are not good please let me know so that I can know ahead of time <laughs> or at least have a little heads up but I'm, I don't think any of them might be okay so we'll see all right well thank you for watching and I will see you next time bye bye